By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a beautiful episode for you. I'm welcoming uh, her folk back to the channel. She's been here a few times already and she's back with a beautiful Fungasaur deck. I mean, I'm jealous, her folk. I want to play with your deck and I'm playing against her with my Mono Red Flying Circus deck. Maybe you've seen it before. It is also a lot of fun. So we've got two very creative decks going uh, face to face here today and we are playing according to the X points rules and X points means we're playing Atlantic old school that means Fallen Empire is real mana burn is real we're playing one strip but four workshops um, and it also means that there is a points list so here you can see the points list of X points the whole idea is you cannot spend more than 10 points on cards with points allocated to them so you know it's a little bit of a challenge when you're building a deck but I actually found out that some of my decks including Flying Circus actually have uh, you know, don't cross the 10 point mark. So that's kind of nice. You know, I don't always play with all the power cards. Anyway, uh, before I jump into the deck tech section, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of the decks and you do want to see her folks deck. I think it's a beauty. Uh, but before we start with that segment of the video, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go straight to the games. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so click on there and it'll take you straight to the games. And here I am going to continue with the deck decks, starting with the beautiful deck of Herfolk. Let's take a look at our Fungus Army. And here we see the deck of my opponent Herfolk, so this is your blue-green Fungusaur deck. And it, I, I love, I love looking at this deck, you know, I really enjoy it. It's built around Fungusaur, so Fungusaur is a green creature, one green and three to cast. It's a rare. A 2-2 two -two creature, and it reads, whenever Fungusaur is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. So as you can see, there are a lot of creatures and other cards in this deck that can deal one point of damage. So we've got Psychic Purge that can ping for one. We've got, of course, Protocol Sorcerer that can ping for one. We've got the Trikes that can ping for one. So that's pretty cool. So this whole deck is kind of catered towards the idea of creating a really big Fungusaur, and I guess use that to win the game. At the same time, we see some ramp because that's what green's good at, right? We see four Birds of Paradise to hopefully kind of ramp up. And another way to victory with this deck that wouldn't surprise me, to be honest, is by simply starting to clone your own trikes. I mean, against certain decks, that's good. Another road to victory could be by just start cloning your Timmies and, you know, ping your opponent to death. So there are a few ways of winning, but obviously you want to win with a huge Fungusaur. That's what you want to do with this deck. That's that's a simple truth, okay? So here is the deck of her folk. Thank you so much for bringing this deck to the table. Now let's take a look at my deck, Mono Red Flying Circus. And here we see my deck, Flying Circus. So Flying Circus is built around two cards, and that's Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet. Now Gravity Sphere is a card for one, one red and two. It's an enchant world that simply says, all the creatures lose flying. So if you've got Gravity Sphere on board, no creature has flying anymore. But now there is such a thing in magic that's called timestamps. You can kind of layer effects on top of each other. So when I start, uh, you know, the first effect is everything loses flying. But after that, I can grant things flying again. That's the cool thing about it. So I can use my flying carpet to give a creature of mine flying. And that way I'm the only one with a flying creature. So that's probably unblockable, right? I mean, I'm saying probably because you never know what's going to happen, but that's the idea of the deck. So what I want to do is I want to put my fatties like an earth elemental or a fire elemental on that little carpet, you know, and just fly over them and deal damage. I, that whole thought, I just find that really hilarious. So that's kind of the goal of the deck. Now, that's kind of tough to pull off. So what I've done is I've put a lot of cards in here to kind of stall time. So I'm playing with Mazes of If, but also Wall of Fires, because Wall of Fires can kind of keep back, you know, my opponents from attacking and give me extra time for this quite, you know, complex plan, I guess, for magic. So um, then I'm also playing with another really cool win con. So if, if this trick is not going to work, the flying carpet idea, gravity sphere idea, I'm also playing with Sword of the Ages. So Sword of the Ages is an artifact for six that comes into play tap. But when it untaps, I can tap and sacrifice an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power to my uh, to any target. So also to my opponent, that could be an option. So I'm playing with Wall of Fires in here. So Wall of Fire, pay one red, gives them plus one plus O. Oh, so I can make a huge Wall of Fire, right? a very powerful wall of fire and then sack it to my sword of the ages so i can kind of make a wall of fire fireball 
which is, um, I know it's kind of ridiculous, but um, it's cool. And I've actually won some games with Sword of the Ages and Wall of Fire that way. So it's pretty nice. Another card that can do really well in this, in this deck is Mirror Universe, because this deck is quite slow. So if my opponent goes faster than me, then later in the game, at least I can change uh, the life totals. So probably I'll be on a pretty low point uh, life total. My opponent will be on a high life total. I can swap it and then I can maybe finish it with some direct damage. So that's another way to do it. I'm also playing in this deck, by the way, with Falling Star, which could be really, really good against all those pesky Tims. You know, I can kill all the Tims with one Falling Star. That would be pretty sweet. Pretty ruthless since I am the Tim. I'm basically killing myself, but I like the idea. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. Take another good look, look before we uh, move on. There's a lot more happening, but I just want to highlight those two strategies for now. Um, and we've discussed the deck of her folks, so I guess we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. We've got her folk on the play. She's sitting on the left with her blue and green Fungusaur deck. Really looking forward to seeing it in action. And she's taking on my mono red flying circus deck, starting with a mountain. Both decks are very budget friendly, by the way. I'm playing a completely foreign black border deck, so that makes my expensive cards a little bit more affordable. And her folk, uh, her deck is also all made up out of reprints, very affordable deck. So if you enjoy these decks, it's quite easy to, uh, to make them. So her folk here, five cards in hand. No, it's gotta be more than five, right? Or did she take a mulligan perhaps? Should be six in hand, perhaps there are six, no five. So I guess she took a mulligan. I'm starting here playing my second land, a Hammerheim, and passing the turn. Are we going to see a Tim? That's a question now. She's got enough mana for it. There's the Timmy, Protocol Sorcerer, the 1-1 one, one Pinger. And that, of course, goes really well with the Fungus Sword. That's part of her, of her plan. I'm starting here playing another Mountain Tapping 3 as well. There's a Wall of Fire. Remember, I'm playing a full playset of Wall of Fires. O5 creature, pay one red, give it plus one plus O, a wall, that means it cannot attack. You don't see walls anymore that often, so I really enjoy decks where I can get to play them. I try to find a space for them, you know? Uh, anyway, Herfolk taking her turn number four, starting with the City of Brass and just a pa uh, pass. Now, the Timmy doesn't mind the wall, it can just ping me for one and, uh, on my end step, so I guess that's what she's gonna do. I'm tapping four here, by the way, and there is a flying carpet. So this Flying Carpet is the first part of my combo strategy in this deck, right? Flying Carpet and Gravity Sphere, and then I need a fat creature like the Earth Elemental to put on the carpet. So there we see a pink for one on my end step. So I'm going to drop here to 19, passing the turn back to her, folks. So she's going to take on turn number five. Or are we going to see a Fungusaur? That's a big question. Because that's what her deck's all about. She wants to play Fungusaurs. Ooh, just passing the turn, it seems. No land drops for her. Tapping three, there's a Gravity Sphere. So I've got Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet online. Now I need to find a creature to put on the carpet. Five cards in hand. So I've got my combo, but now what? Five in hand seems to me that I'm going to pass here to her folk. Of course, she's going to ping me for one. I'm going to drop to 18. She's going to play another City of Brass. She's still on 20. I mean, she's doing fine and passing the turn. So both of us are playing it kind of slow, but now I've got five mana. That's important because I can cast Fire Elemental or, yeah, Fire Elemental or Earth Elemental. In this case, a Fire Elemental. There's a counter spell though. Very good counter spell from her folk. Because remember, I can put the Fire Elemental on the flying carpet and then attack for five in the air. And there's another ping. So already on 17, that Timmy is doing a lot of work. Now her focus taking her turn. Tapping two, no untapping again. Playing a regrowth there on the counter spell. Oh, that's so annoying. Knowing that your opponent has a counter spell in hand. <sighs> anyway, tapping five, playing an Earth Elemental is probably going to get countered, but maybe I've got more Earth Elementals, Fire Elementals in there. On the other hand, I, I kind of feel like I want to play through the counters. I don't just want to wait. So I'm going to go here to 16 and her folk taking her turn. Another City of Brass. I mean, that's three City of Brasses. It's got to be annoying, but she's got six mana now. She could play out uh, Triskelion.
but she's just passing the turn. Four cards in hand. There is a Mishra's Factory. I can also put the Factory, of course, uh, on the carpet. Could do that next turn, because now it's still a Summoning Sickness. Tapping five, are we going to see another big creature, another elemental, so another earth elemental. So it looks like I just had a lot of elementals in my hand. Are we going to see another counterspell? That would be kind of insane. Crossing my fingers here, hoping that this can stick to the board. It looks like it's going to resolve. It is passing the turn, taking another damage from the Tim. So I'm on 15 now. Already five damage dealt, but at one Timmy. That's pretty impressive. Now let's see what her folk can do. Can she do anything against maybe my artifact of flying carpet or something against my fatty? She's going to tap four, take a damage from the City of Brass, dropping to 19. It's the first damage that she's taken this turn, or this match, I should say, this first game. Are we going to see a clone, for example, for four? Untapping again, changing her mind, though. Yeah, she's stepping it differently. I think that's a better decision. Why would you take damage if you don't have to? I wonder what she's going to clone here. Yeah, she's going to clone to Tim. Wow, so she's got two Timmies. And she can now take that life loss back, by the way, her folks. You should be back on 20. Because you took damage from your City of Brass, but then chose not to use it, so... I mean, it's only one point, but it can be relevant, actually. We'll just have to wait and see. Oh, an Earthquake for one! This is brutal! Earthquake for one! Can Herfo counter this away? This is really brutal, this Earthquake. Gonna kill both of her Tims. Of course, she can ping me for one still. Gonna drop here to 14. Oh, look at that. She's playing three Psychic Purges. Okay, she's going to point it towards my Earth Elemental instead so she can kill my Earth Elemental. Oh, that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Because my Earth Elemental got a damage from Earthquake and then a damage from the Tim. That's two damage and then three Psychic Purges, meaning five in total. Then it dies, but at a hefty cost. Her folk, no cards left in hand anymore. Now I'm going to animate the factory attack with it, putting her folk on 13. Yeah, it's looking, all of a sudden it's looking very bad for her. And I think her draws were quite unlucky, having three Psychic Purges in hand. It's just too much. I mean, Psychic Purge is nice later in the game once you've got your Fungusaur. Or, of course, if your opponent is playing with a lot of 1-1s, one it could be useful. But uh, not now. Anyway, there's a pass. One card in hand for her folk. I can now animate my factory, of course, put her on 11. Or can I do something else with my mana? Yeah, just animating, attacking, still 5 open. So maybe I've got another elemental. On the other hand, there are already 3 elementals in the bin. There's another wall of fire. 2 cards in hand, and a pass. So let's see if her folk can get back from this. I mean, I only have 2 cards in hand. She's got 2 in hand now as well. If she's kind of lucky with the draw, who knows? Ooh, tapping six, taking two damage. Gonna drop to nine. There is a Triskelion. I mean, that's actually pretty useful. The Tri can block the factory. Kill the factory even if, uh, if her folk wants to. But now I'm kind of stuck again. There's a Maze of If. I mean, one of the things I can do is... Animated, give it flying, and then just kind of see if her folk wants to spend the uh, counters on it. But yeah, I guess at this stage that wouldn't be a good decision. Oh, a clone! Look at that. So her folk really now top decking nicely, finding good cards, cloning the trike. That is a good move. Still, it's going to be hard for her to actually deal damage, but she is definitely stabilizing. Three cards in hand now. Two wall of fire stare that, you know, are holding down the fort, but that's pretty much all they can do, really. Passing to turn three in hand. Her folk one in hand. Looks like I'm going to do something on end step. There's a shatter. Ooh, okay, so I'm going to kill one of the trikes, and of course, in response, she can deal three damage to me. So I'm going to drop here to 11. 
So I guess I just top decked that, uh, that shatter. There's another factory from the top of my library. Gonna animate the factory. Interesting. So now I'm kind of inviting her folk to use two counters on the factory. So I'm gonna attack here. Remember, I can also pump the factory with the other factory. So she's gonna try to kill it. Now I'm gonna pump it, making it a 3-3. Then she's gonna use her last counter to kill it. And this is not that bad for me because the next turn I can attack with my factory. The only thing here that's, that I don't like is the fact that um, she still has a target. You know, the, the trike is still there, so she can still play clone on her Triskelion. There's another island from her, folks. She really needs a good top deck now. On the other hand, there's not that much pressure. I can only attack with the factory, and that's only going to uh, do two points of damage. So it's not too bad. She's still very much in it. Tapping six. Oh, Desert Twister. She's going to twist away my flying carpet. Oh, man, that's interesting. Seeing the value of that carpet, you know, the carpet's super risky, of course, with that gravity sphere. And tapping for another carpet. So that's unfortunate here for her, folks. So I had another flying carpet in hand. I guess I'm just going to attack for two here. Oh, I guess not. Going to pay three Falling Star. A Falling Star on the trike. Yep, it's a hit. And maybe you're wondering why is he doing this? Well, it's quite simple. Like I said earlier in the game, uh, you know, the trike is still a great clone target. So I just want to make sure it's off the table. So then if now she draws into a clone, it's pretty much a dead card because all she can clone is, is my Wall of Fire. So that's my reasoning behind playing this Falling Star. And obviously it's tempting not to do it, but to wait until there are more creatures on the board. But, you know, I, I think it's worth it. So her folk on nine right now. Next turn, I can potentially put her on seven. Looks like she drew into a land, played it out. So no cards in hand for her. Two cards in hand for me. Oh, it looks like I want to play out something big. Six mana. Oh, this is going to be a Sword of the Ages. Oh, no, an Urza's Adventure. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Urza's Adventure, Adventure is a card from Antiquities. It is, it is a 4-4, and you can pay zero and give it an, an, an ability. For example, you can give it flying, but then it does take minus one, minus one. So it would turn into a 3-3, three, three. but of course, as a flyer, it's unblockable with the Gravity Sphere. So Urza's Adventure and Gravity Sphere is kind of a, a combo in this deck as well. And now we also see another Trike, by the way, being played out by her folk, which is quite good, you know. And look at this. I'm going to give it flying. Or am I just attacking with it? That's always kind of hard. I don't have the audio, uh, so we just have to wait and see. Maybe I'm just attacking with the 4-4, offering a trade. And Noah, yeah, offering the trade. So she chooses to block and take on the trade. Remember, she is on 9. If she wouldn't have taken the trade, she would fall back to 5. So it's understandable. And for me, it's also... A good deal. One of the things I could have done, I think I've missed some damage here, is animate my factory, give it flying, and attack with the factory. Because then her folk would have to choose what she wanted to do. There's another Desert Twister. Taking care of the last thing on the table that can actually deal damage to her folk. So this is a very good top deck. What else do I have? There's a Fire Elemental. Finding another Fire Elemental. And now her folk needs to find something from the top of her deck. She's on a two-turn clock as is. It looks like she's found something. Okay, there's a Tim. At least that's one chump. Then again, I can, of course, give my flying elemental, fire elemental flying, making it a flying elemental, I guess. <laughs> anyway, attacking here. This is what I want to do in life. This is the whole idea of the deck, what you're seeing right now. So I'm pretty happy that the deck is working. Talking about decks that are working, her folks' deck at the moment is not working. She's not finding a single Fungusaur. Luckily, this is only game one, so hopefully... Oh, there, there. There is the big player. At least we have the combo on the table, and of course she's going to deal damage immediately to the Fungus Sword. So it's now a 3-3. Three, three. This is what she wants to do, you know. It's nice to at least uh, see one Fungus Sword on the table. Hopefully, in the, in the games we're going to play after this, we're going to see the combo, um, you know, be meaningful. Giving it flying here and probably killing her folk on the spot exactly, and... 
yeah, this was an interesting first game. I really enjoyed uh, watching my deck doing what it wants to do with Gravity Sphere and Flying Carpet, being able to finish it off by putting a Fire Elemental on the carpet. But remember, this is just game number one, so we are going to shuffle up and uh, we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Her folks sitting on the left, I'm sitting on the right. Looks like I've taken a mulligan here, starting with one card less, six, but I'm on the draw. There's an island by her folk, mountain from my side of the table, and a pass. So let's see if her folk can now find the fungus or a little bit earlier in the game. There's a Sylvan Library. That's going to help her with it. That is pretty sweet. Sylvan, of course, a very good card in these decks that are looking for specific components. There's another mountain from my part in a pass, so no Felwer Stone for me. I'm playing, I believe, three or even four Felwer Stones in this deck, but not finding any. And her folk looking at her top three cards because of the Sylvan, just picking one. She's on 20. Are we going to see? There's the Tim. That's what I wanted to say. She's playing a full playset of them, so it's not a surprise. There's a mountain and a wall of fire. Again, the Tim doesn't really mind. So her folk, again, looking at the top three cards. Now we had a little peek. I think I saw Tim. Gonna put them back. Play a land for turn. Are we gonna see another Tim? Why not? You can ping me for two. Or a Fungusaur. Fungusaur would be really good right now with the Tims on the board. There's another Tim though. And passing the turn. So now she can start pinging me on my end step. Land number four. So no ramp at all. Okay, there's finally a Felwer Stone. Tapping two more and the Felwer Stone. <laughs> Another Wall of Fire. Oh, man. I mean, they're good, I guess, against, you know, against the Trikes in a way. Pinging me here to 19. Sometimes the Wall of Fires can be quite good against uh, creature heavy decks. There is another forest and a pass. So no fungus or yet for her folk, but she can now ping me for two on my end step with the double Tim. So I need to find a way to put some pressure on the board. Three cards in hand, it seems. Tapping three, what am I gonna do? Oh, a falling star. Yeah, that is of course risky. Playing a falling star, counter spell though. Really good counter spell. Oh, that would have been a sweet falling star. Feels kind of weird, you know, being so aggressive against Tim's, but yeah, you have to do what you have to do, right? Uh, pinging me for two, by the way, dropping here to 17. Let's see what her folk can do, looking at the top three cards again, because of the Sylvan, not taking any extra cards and just passing the turn. Surprises me a little bit, because I think you could, you know, take at least one extra card, there's no pressure. There is a fire elemental. Are we going to see another counter spell by her folk? She's thinking about it. Or is she pretending to have a counter spell in hand? On my end step, another ping for two, dropping to 15, pass turn back to her folk. But next turn, I can start attacking with the fire elemental. One of the things her folk can do is double block the fire elemental and then ping it to death. But I mean, do you really want to do that? It is costing you both of your Tims. And remember, she also has a clones in her deck, you know, four of as well. So if she can find some clones, maybe she can make like a Timmy army and ping my creatures to death. That would be super scary for me, but great for her folk. Tapping four again. And what are we going to do? There's a flying carpet. Okay, so I guess I can make it unblockable. Do I want to? Okay, I guess I do. I mean, I might as well just attack and just offer her folk to trade. I mean, if she wants to trade two Tims. But attacking through the air, putting her folk on 15. I guess, you know, Fire Elemental does put her on a three-turn clock. Then again, she can also choose to Charm Block at one turn. So four-turn clock, I guess. Because she has that Birds of Paradise that has flying. And now again, her folk looking at her top three cards. She's got six mana. Are we going to see a Triskelion? That will be... A Trike is quite good also because of the Tims. So next turn she can deal two points of damage to the Fire Elemental with the Trike and then two more points with the Timmies, killing the Fire Elemental. Fire Elemental and Triskelion... Sorry, Protocol Sorcerer and Triskelion. Those two cards really go hand in hand. 
I wonder what I'm going to do. I guess he's just going to give it flying and then see what her folks going to do. One card in hand for me, three cards in hand for her folk. I'm on 13, her folks on 15. Tapping a lot. What am I going to do here? I'm going to play, do I have a fireball maybe? I do play one fireball main. I also have an earthquake. Oh, there's a, uh, oh, this deals six damage to everything. A card from the dark. Oh, this is pretty brutal. I mean, she can deal five points of damage to me. So, I mean, I'm losing a lot as well. I'm going to eight and then the six damage. Gonna drop to two life. Wow. I mean, this is a pretty drastic move. At least I should have attacked first, which is a huge mistake, right? If I, I just should have attacked because it doesn't matter what she's going to do because I knew I'm, I'm going to play that afterwards. That would have saved me some damage. Now I'm on two. And remember, she is also playing with Psychic Purges. So two Psychic Purge and I'm dead. Wow, this is a super risky play. There's a Fungusaur. Oh, and the next turn she can start attacking with her Fungusaur. And I'm on two. Am I going to be killed by a Fungusaur? Oh. Why did I do it? It's like I killed myself. Did I have... Uh, that was an interesting move. I mean, then again, she did have, of course, the two Tims and the, and the Trike, so she was slowly pinging me to death. But like I said, I think I should have attacked first. That was definitely a misplay, and then play that card after. Oh, look at this. She's going to make it a 3-3. I'm going to give it flying, because why not? Because it's just funny. And I think I'm going to be killed by a 3-3 Flying Fungusaur. Oh, that is awesome, her folk. That is the victory that we love to see here on Timmy Talks. That is fantastic. That is, that is just great. And I mean, her hand was pretty good. She also had Clone in there. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, the good news is we are going to game number three. So we're going to shuffle up and I'll catch back up with you in game number three. Game number three, the Decider Uno Uno. I'm on the play starting with a mountain. So are my flying elementals going to win it? Or is it going to be her folk with her fungusaurs and her timmies? Let's see. Let's find out. So we're both just playing some lands here, passing turns. Again, no Felwer Stone for me. I mean, those turn two Felwer Stones, usually I have them with my deck, but not finding any her folk here. Do ramp. Uh, she is ramping a little bit with a Birds of Paradise. There's a gravity sphere, so now it's a bird with clipped wings, but it still produces mana. So nothing to worry about for her. There is an island for mana. Are we going to see a fungusaur? Yeah, fungusaur! It's really sweet, finally! An early fungusaur. After her folk, of course, winning uh, the game two with a fungusaur. Tapping four mana here. Three instead. Okay, there's a wall of fire, so at least the wall can block the Fungusaur for now. Let's see what her folk can do. There is an uh, island, so she's got five mana now. If she can play a Tim, that would be really sweet for her. She's tapping four. Are we going to see a clone on the Fungusaur? There's a clone. That is funny. So she's got two Fungusaurs. Oh, Psychic Birch! Giving that Fungusaur a plus one, plus one counter. That is really cool. There we see a Strip Mine. Could use the Strip on the Forest. Then again, I mean, she's got the Birds of Paradise there. There's a Jam Day Tome. Okay, so I can start drawing some cards from behind my Wall of Fire. That could work. The nice thing about Wall of Fire is that it's an O5 wall, so it doesn't. Uh, I can just block the Fungusaurus and it doesn't deal any damage to, to them so they don't grow, which is good news. I guess her folk here is going to swing in with her Fungusaurus. She's going to... Ooh, six. Are we going to see a Triskelion here? No, we're going to see a Desert Twister on my Wall of Fire. Oh, that is funny. She's playing this very aggressive... And now she is attacking. Oh, man. Not quite sure why there's a counter on that one Fungusaur, by the way. 
There is a fire elemental, but maybe I missed something. Anyway, there's a fire elemental. 5-4 fire elemental. Good news for me, because I believe both fungusaurs are just 3-3s three at the moment. Or maybe she's using the dice just to indicate the power toughness of her uh, fungusaur. So that's a 2-2, two, two, I believe. The other fungusaur is a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, a brain geyser. That is brilliant. This is... I mean, things really looking up for her, folk. I mean, brain geysers changes matches, you know. That's such a powerful card. It gives you so much card advantage. She's drawing five cards from her brain geyser. That's huge. And I only have my jam day tome. I could, of course, attack here for the, uh, with the fire elemental, kind of offering a trade. Because she could double block. I don't think she's going to. Anyway, attacking here with my 5-4. Let's see what she can do. Probably just going to take the damage here. Exactly. Going to drop to 14. Makes perfect sense. Going to play another fire elemental. Okay, that's quite good for me. And I've got three cards in hand. Passing the turn. So her folk. She's got a lot more cards after that brain geyser. There's another forest. If she can find a Tim, or if she, better, if she can find a Triskelion, that would be so good for her. There's another Birds of Paradise. This is going to be such an important turn. Are we going to see a Tim? There's a Tim. Okay, so next turn that Tim can start making those Fungusaurs bigger and bigger. That's going to be problematic for my Fire Elementals at a certain point. I really wonder now, okay, I'm taking on my turn. Am I going to swing in with both Fire Elementals? A Falling Star will be so good right now. Look at that, super aggressive, attacking with both Fire Elementals. And she's just chomping with the birds. That makes perfect sense. She's got enough mana anyway. Man, that's a good move here by her folk. I'm on 15, she's on 14, she can start attacking me. Do I have a follow-up player in my second main? I'm now a little bit worried. You know, I, I figured out I probably have a follow-up play, but it looks like I'm just going through my hand, not doing anything. I'm not doing anything, passing the turn here. Oh my goodness, this is a problem. So she can swing in for five, well, with the extra Tim Ping on one of the Fungusaurs, she could actually swing in for six, put me on nine. Her folks still being on 14. Yeah, exactly. So she's going to make that a 3-3 three, three as well. And now she's attacking six points of damage coming in. But it looks like I've got a response, though. What can I do? Oh, yeah, of course. Disharmony. I, I forgot all about that card. I have a Disharmony in my deck. Is it going to resolve? Please let it resolve. It's such a cool card. So Disharmony, a card from Legends. Oh, maybe she's got a Psychic Perch to make her one of her Fungusaurs bigger. So what Disharmony does is I can pick an attacking creature from my opponent, take it, uh, put it on my side of the board, untap it. Oh, we see a Power Sink, though. We see a Power Sink. That is so unfortunate for me. Because this would have been great. I could have taken one of the Fungusaurs, used that Fungusaur to block, block the other Fungusaur. It would have been a two for one. It's not meant to be, though. Dropping here to nine. Oh, man. That was a really, really good power sinker, folk. That was really good. Oh, there's a Falling Star, though. What is she going to do? Does she have a counter spell for the Falling Star? If not, oh, this is going to be exciting. Oh, <laughs> Falling Star. Can I hit both the Fungusaurus and the Tim? Oh, man. This is huge. Because I'm pretty low. I'm under pressure here. Oh, hitting all three with the Falling Star. Yes. Sorry, her folk. I'm so sorry, but I'm just so happy. Uh, I just love... Watching this flip, and I think this is a game decider here, putting her folk on four with a double attack with the fire elementals. This is going to be super tough for her, and she basically kind of had the game. But uh, this falling star changes everything. Let's see, this is probably her last turn. She has to find a way out of it. At least play two blockers, but nope, that's it. She can only remove one of the blockers. Oh man, but what an exciting game number three. This is the kind of magic 
that warms my heart. I love it. Her folk, love your deck. I think we got a really good uh, show of what your deck can do, you know, um, in, in this game, but also in game number two. Game number one, not so much. You were quite unlucky. Uh, but yeah, it was great. Thank you so much for these matches. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button, you know, become a subscriber and simply follow the channel. Watching these videos is already a lot of help for me as a content creator. And if you'd like to do more, you can also consider liking, sharing and commenting on this video. Those are three easy steps to take and they're all completely free. And then there's one last thing you can do is you can also financially support Timmy Talks by becoming a Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info and I can already tell you that it starts with one for one dollar a month and for that one dollar you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord server and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video. What end scroll? This end scroll.